and welcome to Faith, Final Drafts, and The F Word. I'm Darla Phillips, a host and producer, along with fellow screenwriters Sarah Hopkins and Rebecca Williams Spindler. Join us as we share our experiences navigating careers in film and television. Add in the twist that we're women of faith entering into life's second season, and you might find yourself mumbling under your breath. Good luck with that, ladies. Follow along for some guaranteed laughs, a cry or two, and some valuable screenwriting and industry perspective. Anyone with a dream will enjoy this podcast video. Hope you join in. And remember, we got to enjoy the journey. Hello, everybody. We are back. First of all, I want to welcome you to this wonderful setting. So we are in far northern Wisconsin in a national forest at a cabin, but to me, this is more like a chalet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. From the so, 70s, yeah, although it was yeah. built in the 80s. But I... <laughs> Stone hearth, and we have swag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so um, today, our topic is um, love thyself, and why it's important to take a moment out of your life to focus on yourself and work on you and you are your greatest masterpiece but before we dive into the topic um let's talk about our three f's shall we yes so who wants to go first well if we're going in order becky that would be that's me (laughs) so my faith actually brought me to this particular topic so um Mm -hmm. at my church one of our sermons was rolling the stone away and Do you roll the stone away for yourself or do you spend a lot of time rolling the stone away for someone else? And it's important, you know, to help other people as moms. We do that all the time, but it's also important to roll the stone away for yourself. So I guess I'm final drafts, right? Yep. All right. The most exciting thing is about three weeks ago, I actually finally did send in a I hate to call it a final draft because I'll say the first draft that I was brave enough to share with anybody, <laughs> which is probably like draft number 1000, but draft number one for uh, my manager who I sent it to. So anyways, I was really excited about that. That was a process that um, I started over a year ago with, with you know, note sessions um, on the topic. And yeah, I'm just excited. It took a long time to get to that point, but I pushed send. And yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> and we'll get into next episodes. We'll get into more, of the, more about that. So, anywho, Yahoo! Congratulations on pushing. Yeah, that's you getting it out there. Yes. That, was, that was a big one too. Like, especially as a feature. <sighs> yeah, that feature Thank is you. something that has. In, I love how you talk about story and how much of it is so personal and internal, and that you. We're growing it and shrinking it and making it the best version that it could be before she sent it in. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I I reframe the temptation to push send too early. (laughs) But maybe I did. I don't know. (gasps) We'll find out. But thank you. Happy. Yes. Yes. For (laughs) real. For real. So I'm the F word. I feel like this is my life lately. <laughs> and these guys know I've we've had uh, quite a quite a year. Uh, our this season of trials has been ongoing of really great things, but also some rough things. And um, my husband was just uh, very ill after a complication after a surgery. And when this person who has always been your super strong person that you've never had to roll a stone away for <laughs> to watch this person who has always been so strong and so healthy just really. Whoo, down um, took a lot out of me, literally to visceral levels of mm. like faith, raw belief and faith. And um, in the midst of that, I didn't take really good care of myself. Mm. And that's I love that you brought this topic. I was literally reading through some of the points. I'm like, oh, well, totally <laughs> failed on that. Totally <laughs> failed on that. And I think it's been a, a you know like you were saying with mothers and coming into it, and you just automatically do these things. It's part of our nature, which. God designed us that way, but we also, he also designed us to take care of ourselves yeah. and that it's so important to recognize you can't take care of somebody else if you're not taking care of yourself. Exactly. Right. And so I really struggled with a lot of these things. So I'm excited about this topic. Um, topic. Yeah. The frustration of not taking care of yourself and you, it feels like you, you get too far down a road before you recognize it. So mm-hmm. that's why I think this is great. Yeah. Great yeah. topic to talk about today. Yes. Yeah. So we'll just dive right into it. Okay. Um, so this is for anyone out there, you know. 
um, our podcast is about emerging writers, but I think it's also about anyone that's taking on whatever journey, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're trying to chase that dream. And in order to chase that dream, you got to find time and the wherewithal to go after it. But how do you do that when you're doing everything for everybody else? <laughs> and so whether you're writing a story or a script or doing a work of art, painting, interior decorating, <laughs> preparing for a wedding, <laughs> um, you know, baking those cupcakes for the school, bake sale at the last minute, these all constitute as masterpieces that you take on in your own realm. So, you know, our children, as mothers, mm -hmm. our children are our masterpieces. But how do we work on our version of ourselves? And why don't we take the time to focus on ourselves? Because we are our own greatest masterpieces. Mm -hmm. For sure. And there are times, more often than not, where we have cracks in the masterpiece mm -hmm. so, or the paint's peeling on the masterpiece. The masterpiece is the dumpster. <laughs> yes! Or it's on fire! And how do we put the fire out? So, you know, let's talk about how we can get back to ourselves and, you know, push forward. And the other thing I want to talk about is a lot of times as women, we are so hard on ourselves mm -hmm. and we are so judgmental on ourselves. Like, Oh, that doesn't sound so hard. Just push forward. Just keep pushing. Mm -hmm. And when you push too much, you eventually hit a wall. Yeah. And then who's there to help you when you have, you know, hit the wall? I like to follow Dr. Sanjay Gupta. I think he's got some, you know, incredible things and advice um, on how to live the best life. And so how do you get back to loving thyself? What are some of the key things that you can do to just, you know, nurture yourself, Connection. mind, body, soul, spirit, everything. Yeah. So let's just get down to the basics. Okay. Are you eating the right stuff? Mm -hmm. We all fail at this. <laughs> let's just look at what we ate last night. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Started out good. <laughs> so in order to feed your body and have the ultimate, you know, output from your body, you got to put the, in the input has to be good. So sure. think about your nutrition. I fail on the sweets. I am a huge sweet tooth. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a sucker for donuts, a cookie, whatever. So it's discipline, mm, but it's also okay. okay to allow yourself. It's portion control, right? Right. But think about, you know, what are, what are you putting in to yourself? And then the other oh thing that Dr. Gupta really, really hammers home is sleep. <sighs> ah, ah, yeah, right. <laughs> sleep when you're dead. Yeah, like, that was my mantra for so long. You just have to live that way and you yeah. can't do that. So hard. <laughs> but it's a critical part of your being because you need to replenish yourself. And um, he calls sleeping, think of sleep as your brain's rinse cycle okay. for clearing out the junk so you, you um, don't get decline and disease you know um it's the rinse cycle and for those of you who can't concentrate you feel like you're <laughs> fluttering everywhere it's probably because you're not getting that good sleep to or get refreshed you have 13 grandkids yeah. okay ah. <laughs> but, but okay but yeah. the sleep yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what is it that you need to do to get the good quality sleep and if it requires you know shutting off everything and turning the thermostat down or whatever do your research on where how you can get the best yeah. sleep possible my husband and i just spent a bazillion dollars well on a new bed so our mattress was 22 years old yeah, it was time it was time it's time yeah. <laughs> when you feel like you're sleeping in a taco we're literally in that whole mode right you're now. growing yeah. into the middle <laughs> it's time and yeah so yeah. sometimes you need to splurge for a new mattress. Well, so I have to say, this is a really hard one for me. Sleep is probably on this list, the hardest one. And so this is where, hey, give us your comments because I really struggle with turning my mind off. And I know that's probably the same with, with yeah. all of us here. Um, but to the point where you can almost get yourself in a panic attack because you're like, mm -hmm. turn off, turn off. And it won't turn off. And then I'm laying there going, this is never going to end. I'll never it fall becomes asleep. its yeah. own special little hell in a way. Yes, yes. It does. When you can't sleep and you're laying there like, I know my body needs rest yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Like the things that you can do. And, you know, they always say you can start praying. I have some some of my awesome Bible study ladies. Um, some of them have a certain prayer that they always mm -hmm. say or a certain Bible yeah. verse or, you know, whatever. Some people, you know, yeah. count the sheep or whatever. Yeah. I remember back in my gymnastics days. <laughs> 
long time ago. Um, we had a coach that was, because you get so nervous the night before a meet or whatever. And so she had us, I remember her teaching us this in a gymnastics class. She's like, everybody lay down on the mat. And she's like, you just lay down flat and you literally start tightening portions of your body. You start at your toes, you point your toes really, really hard. And then you keep pointing your, your calves and then you squeeze your thighs together and then your butt and then your core and then your shoulders and like your neck. And like you hold that really, really tight for a while, like as long as you can. And then you release it one by one again. So it's like, it works down your body and it's, you know, like it's breathing and things like that. And Mm -hmm. that, that little thing that, that one coach took, what, three minutes yeah. to do that with us and that's something that I still try to do if I yeah. can't sleep yeah it's like if your mind is going like combat it with physical yeah, <laughs> yeah. in a weird way and breathing I do believe yeah. breathing yeah. and I don't want to use sleep aids so it's right. definitely a struggle well and at this point in our lives maybe use a sleep aid menopause man wake well, up at 3 a.m and your cortisol levels are like a very <laughs> real thing at this oh, yeah. at, at this point in our lives and it's it sucks yeah. it does so <laughs> let's talk about what you were talking about you know the the tightening and the releasing of muscles that brings us to the next you know um thing that dr gupta talks about movement mm-hmm. movement mm-hmm. and for those of us who are writers what kind of movement do we have? This is our movement all day long. I'm at a screen. I'm moving my hands. I'm getting carpal tunnel. <laughs> so you need to, yeah, get your... Rooting my eyes out. Yes. <laughs> get out and, you know, enjoy oh, yeah. fresh mm-hmm. breath, nature. It's springtime now. Oh, thank things. goodness. And get outside, enjoy nature. And that also helps your brain health and your, you know, physical function. Mm -hmm. It's your brain's superfood is what he calls it, you know, and there's been studies nowadays that you don't have to go to the gym for two hours. You can just take a walk, 10 minute walks four times a day or whatever. And he also said, which I loved was cleaning your house (laughs) is considered movement vacuuming, you know, all of that kind of stuff that I think as women, we're so hard on ourselves, like, oh, I didn't get to the gym this week. Well, but you were up and down the stairs how many times Mm -hmm. with how many loads of laundry and, you know, washing windows, that all counts. Mm -hmm. That really does. So, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, or or yard work. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Gardening. Yeah. Anything that's just, yeah. So I'm I'm thinking of something that you talked about last night, which was the, was it go, go. Oh, what is it? So, <laughs> slow go. Don't no judge go. me. I have subscribed to AARP magazine. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We've all got them in the mail. It Don't, literally shows up in no your shame. mailbox on your it does. birthday. It's a terrible oh, thing. Yeah. But it's anyway, AARP <laughs> talks about, you know, the different eight. Oh, hear the geese? Yes. yes. Oh, geez, geez. Back. That's my spirit animal, guys. Canada <laughs> geese. Anyway, so AARP talks about. In the aging process, you have the go-go mode. You know, you're in your 40s and your 50s, you're in the go-go mode. And then you get into the slow go, and then you get into the (laughs) no-go. And so don't pre-age yourself, is what I guess my advice would be. That's what I liked about that. Yeah, Yeah. that if you like to jog, well, then keep jogging until you, you know, you're 80 or whatever. Please give up. (laughs) Whatever it is that you like to do and that makes you happy and brings you joy, Keep at it. Mm-hmm. Keep and at it. you can do it in a different way. You know, it's kind of like back in the day when you did aerobics and you had like the low impact. <laughs> right. Yeah. So if you go for, if you used to be a runner and you like being outside and running, but that's just a hard no anymore on your knees, go for a really long walk. Yeah. You know, or ride so your bike. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's like right switch amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Movement yeah. is so important. And com- I, the nature part of it. Like it's the, where we live, yeah. we're... It's so hard to be outside in the winter when it's minus 30. Can yoga. Do, got it. Hot yoga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two great things, yeah. The hot yoga does, <laughs> it does battle the winter blues, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my husband, especially, and me when I go. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I think so, so important. So, so important movement. And, and it's what's funny is you can put it off, put it off, and when you finally get your booty out, there and walk and so this is a miracle like yes. why did I wait so long to get my butt out of the house and right. go on this little walk and and Dr. Gupta also says when you're out in nature all of your senses come alive because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you're not just seeing things you're hearing things yeah. like the geese that just flew by mm-hmm. and you're smelling things we're smelling the grass and then we're smelling spring yeah. so 
And that, as a creator, as an artist, you want to have your senses rejuvenated. So there are when so many benefits. When you see the creator. Yeah. You know, yes. like, yeah. it helps your creative spirit when you're seeing what the creator has made yeah. and the mm -hmm. things that he, you know, <laughs> when I was going through this latest crisis, walking was the one thing that I did do to really help take care of myself because it was almost like I... Again, the fight or flight thing. I'm like, oh, I gotta go do something. Cause, <laughs> yes. Like, what do I do right now? And walking, I, I'm sure my neighbors are like, what's happening? Because <laughs> I, I literally was like, it'd be like a cloudy day, but I'd still wear sunglasses because I was just crying. <laughs> it was like this huge release to be in nature and walking and just like yes. pouring out your spirit, mm -hmm. pouring out your soul, and being in creation just oh, was yeah. like it was it was awesome it was so so good so sorry neighbors <laughs> i'm not crazy it's just a little bit of a rough time so that kind of brings us to the next you know a piece of advice is taking the moment for downtime Ooh, yeah letting yourself i'm just gonna push pause and i'm gonna go take a 15 minute walk yeah right put yourself in time out i love that put yeah. yourself in time out okay. and if you need help to get to time out, <laughs> ask for help. I mean, if you've got your hands full with life or children or job or whatever, it's okay to put the word out there that, hey, I just need some time for myself. Can someone come over here and help me? Whatever. So I can take a time out. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm always tempted. I never really do this. But I'm always like, I'm just never going to answer my phone again. I'm never going to answer text again. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> because I think when you when you feel that that detachment, it's when it's when you do need to reach out and talk to people. And, and downtime you know. can be not in your movement. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. for me, that's what it was. It was like throw the earbuds in yeah. and just you, yeah. you just have to turn your brain off and let because things yes. come in. Yes. That <laughs> it combats the spinning that's to so take up the there. place. Of the, right. Yeah. And For downtime sure. helps you deal with stress. Mm -hmm. It sounds elemental, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And so when you take a moment for yourself just to meditate, take a walk, read a good book, take a bubble bath, yes. you know, go get your favorite ice cream, whatever it is, that helps deal with the stress and it helps your brain also rejuvenate yeah. because the part of your brain that's responsible for memory storage and retrieval gets corroded because stress combats it all the time mm -hmm. and you've got stress beating it down beating it down beating it down and the next thing you know your brain is so frazzled <laughs> and corroded and over cluttered that you can't function yeah. and as a creator when you can't function all the all plates that you had in the air yeah. come yeah. crashing down yeah. so that causes more anxiety yes <laughs> yes oh, yeah. so I think my, the thing that happens in my life when it comes to those things of so many things happening, my daughter's like, mom, your sentence just dropped off. Like I'll try to be, I can't, I literally cannot get across what I'm trying to say. And I'm like, whoa, my brain is way on overload. I mean, I have a trouble doing that anyway, which is why I'm a writer, but it's even worse when I'm stressed out. She's literally like, I need you to make words yes. with your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah, and that's also, I mean, that is a sign of everything that's going on in your life, because I do that all the time, because we talked about this last night, it's, I don't even think it's stress, it's that what I'm dealing with is, it, it is just so deep and so encompassing, Complicated. I yeah. think I'm going to be able to explain it, but it's like, no, I'm not, nope. yeah. <laughs> so that's why my sentence drop. I'm like, never mind, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they're not going to understand, and it's going to take me two years to make them understand, so I don't know, I do that a lot, but I don't think it's always stress, I think it's when you have that much going on in your life. Mm -hmm. well, let's tie it back to, to writing, yes. right? Especially if we're on a deadline or if we're working on a project that just means so much to us, yeah. we are pouring in our, our physical selves, because we are you know, writing with our hands and our eyes, and then our mind is over consumed mm -hmm. 100 or 200 yeah. percent on this story, and we are using a lot of our faculties to build these characters, build these mm -hmm. worlds, build these storylines that we are mentally and physically <laughs> exhausted yeah. after we've created 120 pages mm -hmm. that might have taken us a year. 135 or, pages. Or, or, our manager, <laughs> or our manager said, here's your 120 pages with notes and get it back to me in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you have two weeks to fix 120 pages. 
that is all consuming. And because we are who we are, we're all in, mm -hmm. right? We're all in because somebody is interested in what we have yeah. to say, and we are going to meet that deadline, come hell or high water. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be able to take a step back mm -hmm. after we meet that deadline, after we push send to go, yeah. all right, now I'm going to yeah. focus on myself and rejuvenate myself. Like how, how in the heck are we supposed to pivot and start masterpiece mm -hmm. number two mm -hmm. if our mind is still jumbled yeah. from masterpiece number one? Yeah. So. I think that's really important yeah. as you know, writers and creators that you have to be able to reset yourself. Mm -hmm. And what do you need to do to reset yourself? Yeah, I think I shared um, that whenever I write a feature, it's not always the pilots. I think it's because it's a shorter, a shorter script, so I can't go down the rabbit hole too far. But features, I do like right towards the end. I get so. It's like. I, mm, the characters are in my mind 24 seven, the stories in my mind 24 seven. I sleep, eat, drink that story towards the end when I'm, when I'm getting ready, like, okay, time to, time to send. And it is a very, um, I don't know, what do we call it? Um, what would you call that? Like it's visceral. A, a, it's like obsessive. I yeah. sound like my husband's worried about me when I'm in that place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, after that, my frontal lobe is so on fire. We were talking about this last night. It's like, it's so on fire from pinging straight for that much time. I struggle with that. Like, it's like, okay, I press send, but my brain is still like ping, 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 ping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, quiet down. How do you, so maybe meditation or I think yoga. Pivoting to a different kind of art. Oh yes. yeah. That's oh, a good yeah. 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 So talk about that. So one of the things of, in my frustration of having all of these crises I, my creativity and is, it's, it is fired. It's gone on and it's gone off. Almost like a, almost like a light bulb. Like it kind of freaks me out. I'm like, what is, how am I built so that my brain can literally just completely turn off creatively? Mm -hmm. Um, so <laughs> I've been beating myself up. I'm like, man, I have the, t I should be writing right now and da, 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 da. And I have the script that I'm working on. And I had a, a really great life coach say, you know, what other creative things are you interested in? I'm like, well, I should just be writing. <laughs> and um, poetry is like one of those things that I've always like really enjoyed. Like I loved all the Shel Silverstein, mm -hmm. you know, like where the sidewalk ends and the giving tree, the giving tree, yeah, the giving tree, learning tree, the giving tree. And <laughs> so I was kind of sharing that I enjoyed poetry and like I've been dabbling just like, because I haven't been able to write, I just like little, I'll send an email to myself of like a little poem or a couple mm -hmm. little things that are, feels creative to me, but I know I'm like, it's not a script. It's not part of the plot line. <laughs> it's not a story. It's not something working towards what I think is my writing career. Mm -hmm. And he was like, give yourself some license to be creative in that realm because it will help your screenwriting because okay. it's being creative. I was like, oh, that's so cool. I can yeah. go do that. Yeah. So it's, it's been fun to just allow yourself to to be creative in a different medium mm -hmm. or whatever like go paint yes. you know like doing something like that i have a good friend of mine that has also been going through a hard time she's like i've been watching these instagram like little i don't know what they're called because i'm not great on social media <laughs> what is the thing with the little videos that they do like Oh, with reels, like TikToks, 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 yeah. things like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was saying she, he, she had been seeing some of those on there, and she's like, I, I think I used to like doing that. Like, And yeah. she's like, I'm ordering one of these little kits, it's and so she funny. was going to do some some watercolor. That She's oh, like, yeah. it just feels good to do something that has no like value to it. Like, We put mm -hmm. such value on raising our children and yeah. our careers and our families and these things that are important to us. It's okay to spend time doing something that doesn't seem like it's purposeful or valuable because mm -hmm. it frees up your mind mm -hmm. in a different and capacity. And it's valuable in a different way. In a different way, spread. right? Like we don't put value on things that we feel like is yeah. hobbies or wasting Hopefully time. spark some organic creativity, which mm -hmm. you need to, mm -hmm. to be a writer. So yeah. I think you're right. It's full circle. You've yeah. got to feed those. I mean, go do a uh, what, are the, the, what are you going paint? Wine and paint. Do they, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've done a couple of those, and I was really surprised at what I can do. I'm like, I can actually paint, and it's very therapeutic, mm -hmm. and it felt very freeing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'll do next time. Mm -hmm. Next time my brain is... <laughs> Last weekend with this, I had some girlfriends of mine. They're like, let's just go to the cabin and go paint pots, you know? Yeah. So, like, I guess men, 
I don't know if I'm saying this right. Mandala. Have you seen it? It's like the little yep, you the do little, little dots. dots. Yes. Yeah. So we were yeah. like doing little dots on pots. So I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> like, I'm just dotting <laughs> things on a pot, and it was awesome. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is so good. And the joke was, I can breathe. Yeah. Like, yes. And they were like, I feel like you've been saying that for two years. I'm like, no, what's wrong with yes. me? So I'm. I love this topic. Yeah. All of these things. Like sometimes we feel like we know all this stuff, but we don't do it. Right. Yeah. Just try it, do it. Or we tell other people to do it, but we don't yeah. do yes. it ourselves. Yeah, right. Like I was like, how many times are we so like, dense? <laughs> well, and how many times do we tell our children, it's going to be okay, mm-hmm. just relax, take a chill, you know, mm-hmm. but we should do it ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the other thing I was thinking that I just did this week um, was pick up, like, after winter, we all of the branches, you know, they just fall down and litter everywhere. And and my husband's got a little bit of sore knee right now. So he's like, hey, Darla, you can pick up sticks. <laughs> I'm like, sure, I'll pick up sticks. Um, but that felt so good just to do this mindless act of picking up dead sticks. And then, like, seeing the beauty all around, seeing the mm-hmm. new spring flowers spring up. that I They're so tiny that unless you're right there, yeah. down on the ground, yeah. picking up, you know, you I wouldn't have noticed that or, or, or um, seen those. And so I was like, what a blessing it is to... Just go do the simple act of picking up sticks and then let the Lord show you (laughs) the beauty of the world and the creativity in the world. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. we need those moments for sure. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to the next tip, which is discovery. Mm -hmm. So and another Mm -hmm. way to keep your brain youthful is to never stop learning things and never stop revisiting things that you might have been good at in the past. Mm -hmm. So my example was, you know, if you were in high school band and you played the trumpet, Chances are that trumpet's still in your closet somewhere, or maybe it's in your parents' basement. But you loved it at one point, and you were probably really good at it. Can't you revisit that? Can't you get back into your musicality? Your spouse will love it. Well, <laughs> Learn or, the trumpet again. Or yes. do it when your spouse isn't around, you know, right. or whatever it is. At one time, maybe in your younger days, you did something and you were so... It, it took you to a different place yeah. mentally, and, and it made your heart sing. Mm-hmm. Can you can you pick that back up again? Mm-hmm. And if you still have little ones at home, maybe it's something that you can teach them. Mm-hmm. You know, did you used to play the piano? Mm-hmm. Did you love it? Maybe you don't own one, but you can you can get yourself a little keyboard. Yeah. And they say home. that um, why a lot of people love the ukulele because it's a, I guess it's a really easy thing to learn that you can learn a couple of like really fun songs because there's only a certain number of strings or whatever but like if you ever into music and you're like well I know I'm not getting the trumpet out again yeah. <laughs> but you liked music learn, a, learn how true. to play something on a basic level like you don't need to be mm-hmm. amazing yeah. Yeah. you know like Right, and there's there's so many YouTube tutorials. Oh, yeah. Like people are learning how learn to play anything. piano just by watching YouTube. Like, yeah, it's so cool. My husband taught himself to play the guitar from YouTube, mm-hmm. and the piano I played as a child years and years. <laughs> didn't I hated it? Didn't touch it <laughs> again until the super stressful time in my life. I played the piano daily as therapy, and mm. it 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 saved me. I think I, when you said that, it triggered that memory. I'm like, oh yeah, I had a time where I just. That was the only thing I could do to really, I just play mm-hmm. piano, it would soothe me. I became a better piano player. Yeah. <laughs> what a great, yeah, what a great thing. And then the last piece of advice was connection. Yes. It's your social circle, who can you connect with? Um, you know, are there other piano players you can connect with? Or ukulele players, mm-hmm. or painters, or writers, or people who want to jog with you? You know, um, that's where you can find your special, special people mm-hmm. and help sure. you su- and help support you. Mm-hmm. And then when you, you exercise together, as I think it's so much more boosting. It yeah. boosts everything yeah. if you've got someone else to walk with. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. my therapy session. My good friend <laughs> yeah. Bev. We were like, <laughs> we both have Y memberships, and we're both like, we're not going unless you're going. So we became very accountable <laughs> yeah. to each other, like going to the Y today at one, and you know, it was like, you're gonna make it. Right. Just don't stop and get donuts and a coke on the way home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's what I used to do. <laughs> my sister and I, we, back when we didn't have to worry so much, we didn't, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> well, that would be me. <laughs> Going, you know, through the Starbucks drive-thru on the way back from the Y. <laughs> I got a 
going to reward myself. I just worked out. Blaze the reward. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> I'm keeping both those places in business, the why answer. <laughs> so to kind of wrap things up, um, I just you know want to share something about us as believers, right? As believers, there are those of us who feel our Christian responsibility is to our relationship with God and with one another. But what about the relationship we have with our own mm -hmm. selves? Do we have that strong bond with our with our own selves? And mm -hmm. to be good followers of Christ, we, we need to be first good with ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I love the hymn, All is Well. Mm -hmm. All is well with my soul. It just makes goosebumps for yeah. me when I hear that yeah. song. And so I just want to just put out there to our listeners and our folks that follow our podcast, is all well with your soul? Is all well with you? And if it's not, take some time and find a way to be to be well. Yeah. yeah. And that starts with taking a moment. Yeah. Taking a moment. Yeah. Or taking yes. several moments. Yeah. And you yeah. mentioned a little bit about knowing yourself. It takes knowing who you are. And I think that's a journey that we're mm -hmm. all on. But isn't it cool to be the age we're at? To really like, <laughs> I think I know myself pretty well now. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, just know who you are and, and uh, don't be ashamed of it and be proud of that. And um, that's a huge part of thinking the wellness. Not afraid to. Yep. And not afraid to ask yeah, for help. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And being transparent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes, you know, I'm so grateful for you guys because. <laughs> You got a near fell on the way up. <laughs> <laughs> but like have have people that you can trust. Mm -hmm. Um that if you're like, I don't even know where to start with becoming well, like yeah. other people might have been down that journey mm -hmm. where it can help maybe give you some wise advice. Like I love mentorship. I think some mm -hmm. of the best mentors I've had, that's always been a part of it. Right. But I didn't really listen very well, did I? <laughs> well, did I too? And I think a lot of us are blind to our own stress. Yeah. People can mm -hmm. see it on us, but we're blind to it because yeah. we just keep trucking through, trucking yeah. through. So if someone brings to your attention like, hey, are you doing okay? It's because you look like you're not doing okay. <laughs> so take a moment and kind of listen that someone might be saying, hey, I'm trying to help. What's going on? You need to talk? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things, like, you think about how you parent your kids, and I, somebody gave me some advice. They said, if you're, if it feels like your kid's not really talking or engaging with you because they got a lot going on, like, sitting down and being, like, in front of them across the table is terrifying. Right. But they're like, take a road trip. Because yes. you're, both, you're both watching the roads mm -hmm. and have the kid drive. Because when they're driving, they're less inhibited or something. There's something oh, about that. I can doing attest to that. That's the truth. Right. They do yeah. like to talk yeah. when they're behind the wheel. So, okay. like, grab your friend that looks like she's got analysis paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, yeah. let's go take a road trip. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great advice. Let's go take a, a ride for some ice cream. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Forget and the nutrition part. The way back. Forget the whole <laughs> nutrition part that we talked about earlier. <laughs> no, it's so important. And something I know I truly needed I need to be better about in my own life is taking better care of myself and I, I mean a funny that I shared with you guys but even just my own grandson pointed out to me like last week we were in a big party <laughs> <laughs> and he saw Stop my it. toes and I well we'll show them <laughs> but this he, way up. Yeah, I'll put them up there no. <laughs> um, my grandson he's like not just turned nine and he just looks at my toes he's like Nana, you need a pedicure. <laughs> you need to do something about those toes. And I'm like, he's right. I've neglected myself for many months now. And so still haven't done it, but it's going to happen. <laughs> and so just little things like that, pedicure yeah. and massage. And don't feel guilty and... about taking care of yourself. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Nice. Well, go get that massage. <laughs> go call your friend. Yeah. yeah. Go play the trumpet. Yes. <laughs> and then get back and write. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, yep. Becky. That was sweet. Well, you made it through another episode. Thanks for joining in. For more information on our podcast and videos, be sure to check out our Facebook page with the same title, Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word. This episode of Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word was filmed and recorded in April of 2023 on a gorgeous waterway in northern Wisconsin.